Money Moose here from Money Moose Outdoors. A company reached out and asked if I wanted to do a video on a high-end optic. Um, I did order it myself and I am I was reimbursed for my order. So there's my full disclosure. But they didn't tell me what I had to say. They just said, please compare it to any other scope that you have and check it out. But they wanted to emphasize that it was a high-end scope. Now, a number of the keywords on it do make it sound pretty good. Um, and just a quick glance over the different user manual specs and whatnot. Manual actually looks decently written. It doesn't have a lot of the typos that you normally expect to see. It does come with scope rings. We will be testing out these scope rings as well because if they send them in the product with me, then I expect them to be worthy of the product. Screws are not set in. Okay, it seems to be uh, relatively heavy. I mean, they're certainly not lightweight, but no apparent issues. It is well packaged, I have to say. Now, immediately, this reminds me of my primary arms uh, Marksman ACSS, which I do love. Let's take a look here. So. It does come with lens caps. Ooh, and they even have the bouncy little springs. That's always nice. We have a 3 to 9x. That's a pretty stiff magnifier. I will probably throw a scope lever on that. All right. Let's check the... I always like to see how tactile they feel. Feel if there's mush or play. Honestly, that's actually pretty clean. Uh, a bit more mush on the top. Still tactile. Not as crisp. Oh, and this is the magnification. I see. Very stiff, but does not come with a battery in it. Now, it does say that this is Mills. Oh, it doesn't look like it even came with a battery. Oh, that's unfortunate. It did not come with a battery. Unless I'm missing that somewhere. It's not in the lens cover. Or the lens protector. Why? You know what I'm trying to say. But initial thoughts here. I mean, obviously, this is like just from the first couple of minutes that you've seen. This actually is better made than most optics at this price point. This one was 60 bucks. I'm not going to go and say that this is a high-end scope per se, but I definitely think that it's more well-made than a lot of scopes for around 50 or 60 bucks. Um, it is second focal plane as well, which at this price point, you know, you kind of expect, and honestly with this reticle, you're not getting a whole lot of benefit. Anyway, this is not meant to be a long distance, long range scope. It's a three by nine. So for me, that's a, you know, mid range plinker. Um, I think for something like a 22, I'll probably be putting this on an air gun actually, or uh, I've got 22 I wouldn't mind putting this on. Um, I think it would be honestly probably pretty great. Um, but let's talk through a little bit of why what the real differences are between high-end optics and cheaper optics. Now, this is not information that I have gotten firsthand by any means. This is information that I've gotten through researching, seeing what people in the industry have to say. Um, Ian McCollum has done some really interesting interviews with one of the guys from Gideon Optics who previously worked at, I believe, Primary Arms, which personally I'm a big fanboy of, um, and a few other companies who talks about the differences between cheap and expensive optics. And now, to be fair, he was talking about cheap versus expenses, expensive, talking about like Night Force versus Primary Arms, or Trigicon versus 
hollow sun, you know, stuff like that. This stuff is definitely on another level, but I think that many of the same principles apply. Now, for example, this scope is advertised as being nitrogen filled as well as shock proof um, and a bunch of other stuff. Now, does that mean that you could take this scope and go shooting on in rainy weather or, you know, humid weather or something like that and avoid having it fog up or something like that? Probably. Like, I would not expect this to get all fogged up. Does it mean that you can go load into a, a C-130, uh, jump out, land in the ocean, swim to shore, and expect your optic optic to still be zeroed and function perfectly no but I'm not doing that um, and let's be honest if you're doing that you aren't watching my channel either so what are you doing here but for regular old use namely plinking not self-defense situations either I would say um, I think that optics like this can be great um, and honestly, we're getting to the point where you're getting much better optics at a much lower price point. It used to be that for 50 bucks, you kind of got like the, you know, the Walmart crossbins that really were crappy and you frankly were better off with iron sights. But this thing actually seems pretty decently made for my initial, you know, look over it. It has what seem to be pretty crisp turret adjustments. Um, the pattern of it actually follows the primary arms uh, style and a lot of other styles pretty closely. Um, you know, similar optic or similar setup. Um, so, and it, it feels well built, I would say, which obviously is just, you know, anecdotal, but we definitely plan to take this out, get some shooting with it, uh, both center fire, rim fire, and probably even air guns. Air guns have a different recoil than most firearms do. You typically have a forward and backward recoil, especially if you're using like a Springer. Um, PCP guns can be interesting as well to see how different things behave. I'm obviously just doing a very rough little mount job right now. Um, not even busting out the level because I'm mainly just going to throw it on something and see how it looks so you guys can compare it here. But initial thoughts, um, I'm actually decently impressed. It's much higher quality than most scopes at this price range. So to give you a comparison to something similar, around the same price point. This is a prism optic that was sent by Pinty. It's a 4X prism, so obviously these are two different types of optics. I'm not directly comparing the type of optic, but I want to compare some of the differences that I've seen just in this initial look. The Pinty, a few things that I noticed right off the bat. The brightness, dim, brighter, does not work. Uh, I told them it didn't work, and they sent me another one, and it had the exact same problem, so I didn't bother asking for another one after that. In addition, the lens itself has a lot of imperfections on it. Like, if you're focused on your target like you should be, you won't notice. But if you bring your focus to the glass, you absolutely are going to notice, and your pinty is going to have all these little black dots on it. It's almost like if you have a floaty in your eye. Very similar. So, like... It's sturdy as heck, like the thing weighs a ton, which you don't necessarily want, but it's, you know, you certainly couldn't say that it's sturdy. And it has some features that I really like. The lens is inset a little bit from the edge. It's a little bit more well protected. It has a nice um, uh, rubber adjustment thing back here for your focus. You know, it's got some nice things. It does have protected caps, which I, you know, on a, a prism where you're going to set it once and leave it makes sense. You know, but it's also nice to have exposed turrets like this. Also, it's weird that they're exposed turrets, but they still have a, a head on them to undo. Maybe if you want to do it in, you know, I mean, I guess that's for taking it off and resetting your zero. Sorry, that makes sense. Um, but yeah, so that's the kind of stuff that I normally expect at this price point. Like stuff that I might put on airsoft gun or like a, a cheap uh, air gun or something like that. Um, but something like this, um, this is, honestly, I think this would be great on a 22, maybe a Ruger 1022, um, a Bolt 22 even. Although personally, I like Christmas trees, Christmas tree reticles. Um, but let's compare it to something, you know, that you might spend a little bit more money on. 
So here is my baby. I would send this up so that you guys can compare it a little bit more side by side. This is the Primary Arms ACSS um, HUD DMR uh, 308. I love this reticle, especially the scope's good. The reticle is fabulous. I wish I could put this reticle on almost every other one of my guns. The reticle has uh, quick ranging abilities, so it has these circles built into it where you can put that on a target and you know based off how big the target is and which circle it fits into exactly what the distance is. It also has speed adjustments for either side, so depending on what speed the target is moving at. I'm saying target, fill in the blank for what I'm talking about. Um, but you can see it's a very similar format. They're actually, you know, a lot of them like that prism optic that I was just talking about, they will kind of throw out whatever random weird format looks weird. But this one is actually very similar to what you see in a lot of other optics, and I, I like that. Um, you can see, obviously, I have a throw lever on here, um, but very similar uh, zoom system here. You have what should be your focus. There we go. Your focus back here. Oh, wow. Look how fast that turns out. That is a wild focus. Compared here. See, this one barely moves with each thread. I mean, it moves, you know, it moves, but this one comes out fast. Those are very large threads. Interesting. Um, and your parallax, obviously, on the primary arms you have here on the left-hand side, which I do really like because while you're in the prone position, you can see what your parallax is set at. This one, you have it uh, set at the front, so you would have to raise your head up and look and see what you're sending your parallax to, which is unfortunate. Um, I would much rather skip the illuminated reticle and just have that. But, you know, some people like illuminated reticles. Um, I, I, I like red dots. I don't really care for illuminated reticles. I don't normally use them. So there you go. Um, differences between this, I mean, in the primary arms, ACSS, this is not an expensive optic. Um, I mean, it was, you know, several hundred dollars, but it's not like a Night Force or, you know, really even a high-end uh, Vortex or uh, loophole or something like that, where you're going to be spending four figures on a scope, sometimes like three or four thousand on a scope. But it's very functional. Um, and this one, you know, I would trust on a defensive rifle. Again, it's not something you're going to be getting into a cargo plane or, you know, a helicopter and, you know, going to high altitude, going to low altitude, getting into all these different kinds of elements and pressures and expecting that to work. But for your average dude that takes it out to a range, I hunt with this gun personally. Um, it's going to work great. And this one, um, from initial thoughts, I'm still skeptical. Color me impressed. Uh, the build quality is good. The scope mounts are not great. Um, we'll see how well they hold up. But the design is actually pretty good. And by that I mean they've copied a lot of other good designs out there probably. But I'm impressed. And for the price, you know, there are people out there, myself included, who don't want to spend a couple hundred bucks on an optic for something like a 22 or an air gun or an airsoft gun. And I think that this fills that niche better than a lot of other ones. Um, so I'm going to be doing some shooting with this. I will be spending some time with it and compare it directly to my primary arms um, and coming back and letting you guys know what I find. But initial thoughts. If you want a duty scope, you're going to be spending more money. If you want a scope for an actual war zone, you're in the wrong place. Don't come to me for advice on that. I've never been in a war zone. Um, if you want to scope for a plinker or air gun or airsoft, especially where you're, there's a risk it's going to get hit, then I would say tentatively um, this might be a good option. And this is from Orcare. This doesn't actually have a product name, uh, but it's the Orcare 3x19. Um, and thus far I'm very impressed with the design and just how well it seems to be made just from initial thoughts. Um, I want to go do the box test on it. I want to do some test, you know, throw it in the back of the truck, drive on bumpy roads, see if it still holds zero, that kind of stuff, and come back and let you guys know how it goes. So I will be doing that. Look forward to that. Um, but for now, 
I think this has some promise. And I'm excited to see not 100% gimmicky scopes coming down at a price level below 100 bucks. I mean, this was, I believe, 60 like 65 shipped, so that's pretty good. Um, so, there we go. Also, if you want a fun little knife, this is the Cold Steel Mini Tac, uh, and they were on sale for like 15 bucks at Amazon, so check Mighty Moose Outdoors for links to all this stuff, and we will catch you guys next time.